Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, March 23rd, 2024. Dude, can you believe it's almost April? I mean, what the fuck? Where's this year going? It's like, you're going to say that every fucking year, you asshole. What do you mean, where is it going? It's not going anywhere, all right? It's just, it's here. Enjoy it. And just stop saying that. God, it's April already. Can you believe it's April? Well, you had 31 days of March to fucking prepare for it. You know that April comes after March, right? These fucking people who just spend the whole year surprised. Can you believe it's May 27th? Well, yesterday was May 26th. As far as I know about the uh, numeric system and the uh, calendaric, you know, it goes May, you know, you start with one, there's 31 days. 31 days has May. That's all I have to say. Oh, Jesus. I am in New York City because tomorrow we are doing the 11th annual Patrice O'Neill comedy Benefit, and uh, it's sold out as all previous 10. This might be 12. I don't even know at this point. Um, They've all sold out. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that shows up every year. We have people flying for this fucking thing. And um, it's so much fun. Uh, All of these amazing comedians come out. And half the time we're doing our act, the other half we're just making fun of each other, which I think the crowd in a lot of ways likes watching us shit on each other. Um, But we have like Rich Voss hosting as always, so he always kind of sets the tone, throwing digs. I always feel like he makes fun of you, so you'll make fun of him, and then he saves his better insult for when he outros you so he wins. Sneaky little shit. Um, Anyway, I can't wait to trash him. I've already been doing it for fucking months leading up to this. Um, But anyways, I am in New York City and um, haven't been here in a minute. It's nice to be back. You know what what walking around in New York is like, though? I was just thinking. Went out, I got my steps in, you know, I went went out, got my coffee and all of that bullshit, right? What you're supposed to do in the morning. Staying away from the bread, though. Staying away from the sugar. Staying away from the cigars. Staying away from the fun. Um, <clears throat> old Billy, no tits. Old Billy, flat stomach. Old Billy, still fat. Old Billy, still fat. Old Billy, keep your shirt on. Hey, buddy, buddy, keep your shirt on. I, I don't want to fight you. I know, we just don't want to look at that. Old fat freckles. I still got, I still got it. I still got it. <clears throat> I'm doing the best I can at my advanced age. And um, walking around New York City, it's like leaving a concert and you never get to your car. It's just just a mass of humanity. It's really amazing. I love New York. OK, I'm not I'm not going to be this. I'm not going to be the guy that shits on it here. All right. Love coming here. Beautiful ladies. Right. All kinds of people. The energy, the energy in New York City is just like nothing else. It is. It's fucking fantastic. I love this city, but like, I'm telling you, say what you want about L.A., but our fat people are in cars, all right? They're not waddling down the street, slowing everybody down. But I don't want to just blame them, you know? There's also, like, people taking selfies. You know what's funny now? The big fucking thing with buildings now is you got to have some something fucking douchey like angel wings, <clears throat> something with balloons, just something like really like, I don't know, I like, I, I like powder puff shit. And people are just like, oh my God, puppies and cotton candy. And then you get all these fucking idiots stand in front of it, making the stupid heart sign with their hands. <laughs> And then there's all these cynical cunts like me trying to get past. And you just want to be like, you're like the 5,000th person that just took that fucking picture like that. Can you at least do it in a different way? Take a picture of something else. It's all these fucking idiots. I was sitting, um, sitting on this park bench. There was something stupid written on the wall. I can't even remember what it was. 
It was just like, your heart is like a daffodil. Stop the violence or, you know, fucking yoga, something. I don't know what it was. It was just, yeah, you know, that liberal, ah, you don't really do anything. You know, you ever see like a sign in a window, it just says, be kind. (laughs) You know, I mean, I just feel like young people now, like when they go out on a date, you, like you just go back, you're going to hook up <clears throat> and you go to get back to somebody's apartment. And as you walk in and you just see they have a dumb sign like that in the window. You can't tell me that doesn't kill your fucking heart on right there. You don't have to pop some Cialis and some Viagra. Be kind. Be kind. That's my message to the world. Be kind. Are you doing anything to change the world? Yes. I made a sign. Um, Anyway, and you just sit there and you just watch these fucking people. One after another. They just sat on the bench. Just sat and watched them. Just, I started counting. I got up to six in about like fucking 11 seconds. And I'm like, am I really going to be the asshole sitting here counting? It just became fascinating. It was like, all right. Let me just see how many people do this and how many people are actually kind of taking the exact same picture. One of my favorite selfies is like when when women like go to take a selfie of themselves and they just are completely uninhibited. <clears throat> they just don't give a fuck who's watching. And they hold the cell phone like as high up over their head as they can. And then you just watch them making like they got their lips out and they're make, moving their fucking head around. <laughs> There's no way somebody has, has not made a compilation video of fucking idiots trying to make themselves look as the best looking version of themselves as they possibly can. You know, wait, I've never, you know, all the women I've been with, I don't think ever during sex when they were going down on me, as I was looking down on their head, going, you know, they look a lot better now. <laughs> They're a lot better looking now. When you're down there, now that my head is up here looking down on you, <laughs> you look a lot better. When you're up here kissing me, you only look like you're like a five. When you go down there, all of a sudden, I'm looking at you from up here with my dick in your mouth. Oh, yeah, all of a sudden, you are oh, getting fucking crass here. Sorry. I just don't understand that fucking holding it above your head. I don't know. Maybe it is a better angle. I have no fucking idea. Sorry. Anyway, I just that the f- stupidest thing I did today was I just kept like running past slower walking people only to run into another group of slower walking people. Um, I know. Bill, don't you have better things? To fucking worry about. Yeah, I do. I do. But it's it's still fun to be in this city. City has changed so much. Oh, my God. The only fucking stores that seem to be able to stay open are pizza places, juice places, and weed stores. I swear to God, that seems like it's like 40% of the, uh, of the store space now. I mean, the, the fucking smell of weed when you're going down the street is just... I mean, you always smelt weed. I mean, that was like an amazing thing. Like you would walk down the street in New York when I first came here in the 90s and people would just be openly smoking a joint, you know, walk by a cop and they wouldn't give a fuck because there was just so much other crazy shit going on. Um, and now to just have it like legalized, like there, there was a couple that I smelled. I was like, oh my God. You know that shit you smell and you're like half a hit. Half a hit and I would be on my... Half a hit, I would be doing a selfie in front of the... uh, Be the Kleenex for the cold of the world. Sorry, that's gross. I just saw Kleenex in the corner. I can come up with something better like that. Um, Be the fan. Fan the kindness with the strangers and the heart hands. Heart hands. (laughs) Adults. Heart. I'm just going to make a heart in my chest. Then I'm going to turn my head to the side. Heart. Photo. Thanks. Can you take a photo of me with heart hands? I'm 31 years old. (laughs) 
with a master's degree. Um, fascinating. Fascinating. And then the person I was with told me that they had to close down this one building because people kept jumping from it. Which is really like fucking wild that like 10 feet away, there's people doing heart hands with like, be the cloud in the sky that doesn't rain on the flowers unless they needed hard hands, right? And then like right up the street, <laughs> somebody plummeting to their fucking death. All going on. You know what that is, everybody? That is the balance of life. You know, maybe if people stopped doing fucking hard hands so much, so many people wouldn't have to jump. Maybe that's why they're jumping. They don't want to live in a world where they have to run past fat people only to run into more fat people. And those who aren't fat are making hard hands in front of mindless fucking murals that are deliberately put there, deliberately put there to get the fucking moron masses to stop and do a fucking selfie. Oh, Bill, oh, we wish we could all be like you and not jump and not do hard hands and be a fucking bald ginger with, you know, a cup man titties walking up the fucking street. All right. You got me on that one. You got me on that one. Um, so anyway, uh, let's talk MotoGP. Did you guys watch it this 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 uh, this weekend? Did you guys check it out? Um, incredible race. Um, I enjoyed it. Oh, uh, Jorge Martin won it. Then it was Bastanini and Pedro Acosta, the rookie sensation, 19 years old. And he was driving like a maniac, but he didn't chew up his tires. And after the thing, I'm thinking like, well, maybe, you know, he learned something in the first race. But then part of me, when they were showing the motorcycles, they were in Portugal. They call the racetrack like the roller coaster or something. Like the level of downhill and twisting that this thing was. And like they kept showing motorcycles in slow motion and their front tire wasn't even on the ground. So I was thinking like, well, that's a great way to save your tire. Is <laughs> be doing sort of a four inch wheelie at 180 miles an hour down a fucking hill. Unbelievable. Um, big crash. Mark Marquez. Peco Banyai. Um, I thought Mark, I don't know. Pecco was saying, Pecco was saying that he and Mark knew what the fuck he was doing. He shouldn't have closed the door or whatever. I don't know what happened, but they both wiped out and that got, um, uh, it's Pedro already in front of them. Yeah. I think he was already in front of, he passed both of them. Mark Marquez and Pecco, he passed both of them, but I want to say, Oh, that's right. And then he got into fourth place and he wasn't going to get a podium. And then what's his face had his uh, Maverick Vinales, Vinales, however you say it. I guess his gearbox shit the bed with one lap to go. Um, and he was able to move up. And you know what was was I would be scared about if I was the other riders with that Pedro guy is when he was this was his first podium at the MotoGP level, third place in his second race. And when they were showing him waiting to go out to get their trophies or whatever, he didn't even look excited. Like he didn't look like he was freaking out. Like, I can't believe I'm here. And he was talking to the other two riders like he had been there forever. He already has like that poise. It's unreal. So um, if you're not watching it, like, it's literally looking like the next superstar has already arrived. And um, I just can't stress enough how this is, this is the best racing. The only thing that's more exciting than MotoGP as far as racing goes, in my opinion, is, is the TT. And that's, but, you know, literally like more people have died than years they've had that race. It's fucking unreal. Um. So, uh, incredible race. And I think the bikes look amazing this year. The colors, I fucking love them. Um, I got to make it to a race. <clears throat> I got to figure out some. Austin is next in like three weeks. Very tempted to just, I don't know. I'm working the next weekend. I got the kids. I can't go. God damn it. Uh, but I went last year. What are you going to do? Um, but if you're not watching, you should definitely check it out. Um, 
if you're into that stuff or if you want to try something else, something different. March Madness. Uh, I haven't watched any of it. I start. I was I, I was watching all the conference championships and all of that shit. And uh, I did see UConn. I saw a little bit of that game when I was in um, St. Louis. And um, I was watching UConn. I forget who the hell they were playing, but they were 27 and a half point favorites. My like, 27 and a half. That's fucking crazy. So I put the game on. It's like halfway over, and they were up by 28 points. And right there, okay, gambling's fun and everything, but if you think you're going to do it for a living, these fucking guys are too good. They're so good, everybody's convinced it's fixed. Like, nobody sits there and thinks about the amount of people that would have to be in on that and keeping their mouths shut. Because I don't think any gambler, we just don't want to admit that they're that good. They are that good. They've always been that good, and now they have computers and fucking algorithms. So I can't stress enough to just gamble with something you can afford to lose. 27 and a half. I'm watching it. 28 points. But then they ended up winning by like fucking 40, though. Something crazy. They ended up covering pretty easy. But you actually you actually had to, like, you're starting the game. You're up 27 and a half points. And before they're even in the second half, you're losing the bet. It's just fucking unbelievable. That is that is the good thing about gambling. Is when there's a 27 and a half point spread and the other team's up by 28. And people with no money on the game are like, yeah, this is fucking boring. And they turn the channel and you're just sitting there chewing a towel like what's his face back in the day? Tarkadian. Going, come on, man. Hit the outlet. <laughs> if you don't gamble... A good way to know somebody has money on the game is when there's a fucking game that's like a 30-point differential and somebody is just screaming at the TV like it's only a one-point game. That's that's usually the dead giveaway there. Jeez. Oh, so um, I have to give a shout-out to everybody that came out in uh, St. Louis at the Fabulous Fox, one of my favorite... Um, venues out there just amazing crowds i was there thursday and friday and an incredible backstage just all of these legends have signed the uh the walls back there and one of my favorite things ever is this giant stevie ray vaughn signature that's on the door into the main dressing room um and it's written in silver and <clears throat> it's amazing his penmanship is beautiful, just like his guitar playing. His signature is the shit. It's just fucking awesome. And every time uh, I play there, I always go up those stairs, and I'm just like, I don't know, my heart's like racing just to see that. Like Stevie Ray Vaughan stood right here and signed that door. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of, um, you know, I think one concert or something where he's at the Fox in St. Louis. And I always wonder, like, is that, the, is that the show that they filmed? And then he signed the door and all of that. It's really, really amazing. So the crowds were awesome. And um, I was with Dean Del Rey and uh, Bianca Cristoval. They both killed. And then we went down to Springfield, Missouri. And um, I mean, just talk about like an unbelievably cool ass fucking town. The downtown area looks like an old western town. It's awesome. And there's not a bunch of like corporations that came in there and ruined it. And went to this great burger place. Oh, by the way, I went to one of the best coffee places. I got to tell you the name of this place. Give them a shout out cuz they're a non-profit um they're a non-profit uh coffee place slash art gallery. Let's see if I can find it. I literally have this in my <laughs> in my phone is called Places to Go. Um, Summer States. Did I put it under St. Louis or did I put it under Missouri? Oh, geez, Bill. I put it under St. Louis. All right. Uh, Catalyst Coffee. Um, some of the best coffee I've ever had. <clears throat> and, um, and today... I flew into New York and I went to my favorite coffee place in uh, New York City. And it's actually my favorite coffee place um, 
I like it better than any place I've been to in LA. And I found some really good places in LA, but there was just one place in particular, and I'm not going to tell you the name of that. I'm not telling you the fucking name of that shit because uh, the line is already long enough. <laughs> <laughs> but Catalyst Coffee, um, there's like not enough people in downtown St. Louis anyway, and they're nonprofit, and it helps the art gallery that's part of it. So um, shout out to that place and that guy. Todd was just the nicest fucking dude ever making the coffee. Um, oh, it's one of those cups of coffees. You just savor it. It's fantastic. Anyway, and then we go to... Um, Springfield, and uh, we went down there, and the guy, Chris, who owns the comedy club down there, Dean knows him, I forget the name of the comedy club, the Blue something or other, gave us a quick little tour of that old western town that is Springfield, uh, Missouri. He's like, wow, Bill Hickok shot a kid right here, you know, that beat him in a poker game, took his watch. And the story goes that when the kid won the watch, he said to the kid, now don't be going around town bragging, saying you took Wild Bill's watch. So, of course, what does the kid do? He goes around town telling everybody. Because he said, I'm going to shoot you if you do that, right? So the kid is, Wild Bill hears about it. They run into each other in this square. And the kid was way on the other side of the square. It was really far away for, you know, to shoot somebody with a handgun, right? And uh, he goes... I'll give you a chance to run away. And the kid stood there and wanted to draw with them. And it was almost, they were saying he was so far away, it was almost like a trick shot. And shot the kid dead. And then he went to trial and they acquitted him. And what the jury says is, uh, you know, no man should be going around town talking about another man's watch. Then they go, there was some other woman over here, and she killed her mother. And I was just going, all right, all right, okay, I get it. A lot of killing has been happening in this town. But I'll tell you what else was killing was, uh, you know, I went to, uh, let, me, let me give them some of these. I went and I got this burger. I think I took a picture of it. Took some pictures on this tour. I always say I'm going to try to get involved more with, like, Instagram, and it just it just never fucking happens. Um where the hell is it? Oh, it was right next to the Mud Lounge. That burger place, outstanding burger. And then across the street was a diner that had these amazing singers in there playing live. And I went and I got some, I don't know what the fuck I got. I got scrambled eggs. It was delicious. And um, it was just a beautiful town. And uh, then we went and we did, uh, we all did a show over at Iowa State. University fans were awesome, and um, I was actually really proud of myself because I kind of came on stage and I felt like I wasn't like vibing with them. And the old me would have been like, oh, "This crowd sucks, right?" And uh, but I didn't. I was like, "No, this crowd came to see you. You just came on stage and they stood up, so they are fans of yours. So whatever's going wrong right now is not their fault." So I was going like. I was thinking, I was like, oh, you know what? Because I talked to some people in town and, you know, they had like a real like accent. And I was like, I know what I'm doing. I'm talking too fast. So I slowed down, made that little adjustment. And then, um, and I got out of my head, you know, because you get like defensive, you know, and you start thinking, oh, these people don't like me. It's like, no, dude. You were advertised and they showed up. They, they like you and they want to laugh, but they're not laughing. So you need to you need to make a fucking adjustment. Um, there was a little bit of an echo off the back of the of the venue. Um, I never figured that out. Dean told me he goes, I found if you stood in the middle, you were all right. And that's Dean's music background. I had no idea what to do with that one. But like I, I fucking hung in there. But like, it took me about five, six minutes to figure it out. And then I figured it out. And then it was just like one of my favorite shows of the year. And um, I think, you know, it's funny. It was going down there. I knew it was going to be a great show. Because when, you know, people tour through Missouri, they usually just go St. Louis, Kansas City, and then they're done. So then people in Springfield, they got to drive up to Kansas City or whatever to go see a show. So if you finally come to where they're at, they're, they're, they're like, oh, this is fucking great. And Kansas City and St. Louis, they're used to it. People come there all the time, right? 
You go to Springfield, they're like, oh, shit, I don't have to get in my car and drive an hour and a half, two hours past farms and trucker stops and God knows what. You're actually going to come to me. They're in a great fucking mood. You made a house call. (laughs) So um, I was very... uh, was very happy with that show. I ended up doing extra time. I did extra time when I was in St. Louis too. And I'm not a young fella anymore. So when I go over, it's it's because, you know, I'm having, I'm just having a great time. So uh, I'm very excited, man. I've got another special coming up and this one's going to be, I'm liking how this one is shaping up. Um, You know, I got another, you know, I got, I got a little bit of time to lose the rest of this belly fat here. You know, I got my fucking yoga mat. I was watching this video about like, you know, I think I need to clean my yoga mat. It's been a while. And uh, I didn't realize that's like a whole thing. First of all, if you, I, I found out if you go to like a yoga studio, you should be cleaning that thing all the goddamn time, which I kind of figured out because I stopped going to yoga st- studios. So most places are fucking nasty. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, like those hot yoga places. Jesus Christ. I mean, why don't you just go fucking go lick something on the subway, except you're doing it with your feet. Like you got to wear, listen, you got to wear flip flops if you're going into a a, a yoga studio. And then you got to clean your mat immediately when you get home. And I found these videos You know, it was funny. It was all like women going, this is what you need, tea tree oil. You need this. And you're just going to scrub it with a nice little cloth. And then you're going to hang it. It's just like, I love yoga, but like, it just, the people that do yoga, man, they just, I don't like their vibe. It's weird. They're like relaxed. They don't seem abused. (laughs) You know, and rather than look at myself, I blame them. Um... Anyway, just fucking around here. Let me do. Let me do some of the uh, some of the reads here. I am going to go over a buddy of mine's house, and I'm going to go watch some of this uh, some of the basketball here. Oh Christ! What the fuck did I do with the no? I do this every every time. I always forget to go back. Okay. Oh no! I got to do the reads. Oh look who it is, everybody! Oh Indochino. You know, it's time to start your style redemption story, and look great at your next big event. Upgrade that off-the-rack suit sitting in your closet with the fully customized perfect fit suit from Indochino. Yeah, some chick just dumped you. Go out and get yourself a new suit. Show up like you sold the most cars this month. Uh, Measure yourself in 10 minutes or visit a showroom. Wear your new look right out of the box and keep your budget unbusted with custom suits starting at just three ninety nine, dollars Dude, you're going to look like a million bucks. And if you spill something on it, you're not going to give a fuck. It's $399. Bucks. Who can tell? Who can honestly tell whether you spent three grand or 300 I remember being at a wedding. And I said to this guy, that's a beautiful suit. He told me. He said, I literally got this from Indochino. I go, they advertise on my podcast. Look at that. Oh, you know that they love that at the fucking head office there at Indochino. Uh, suits designed to fit you, made to your exact measurements and customizations, endless customizations, options to get the exact look you want from buttons and vents to pockets and lapels, custom clothing at a surprisingly affordable price, quality wools, linen, and cotton in different colors and patterns, new fabrics, new colors, fabrics, and outerwear styles added regularly. So it's easy to create a new look, dress better. Then the other guys with Indochino. Trust me, the ladies notice. Go to Indochino.com and use code BURR, B-U-R-R, to get 10% off any purchase at $3.99 or more. That's 10% off at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com with code BURR, B-U-R-R. Okay, oh, look what's up next. True, true classic. It's not true, true classic. It's true classic. Uh, Shout out to our sponsor, True Classic, for making us fellas look good and feel good no matter how we move. Uh, Out with your old workout tees and sweat stains and holes and in with True Classic's ultra comfortable, stretchy, active wear. (laughs) Be careful with this shit, though. You know what I mean? Don't let the stretchy after fucking, you know, active wear. Let you eat Haagen-Dazs every night. It's going to be stretchy, active wear because you're out there killing it at the gym. 
True Classic is made with stank-free moisture-wicking technology so you can do all the things in comfort from running on the treadmill to going on a beer run. As long as you're moving, True Classic has the gear for you. They've already helped over 3 million men look great and now you can save big while you move. For a limited time only, get 25% off when you shop now with my exclusive link, trueclassic.com slash burr. All their shirts are made to accentuate the places the eye goes to first. Tighter in the arms and chest, but with the perfect amount of room in your midsection. The best part is that True Classics sell their premium products in packs to help you save. Get started with the two or three pack of t-shirts today and feel the difference for yourself. Just in time for spring, True Classics has introduced over 10 new colors in their classic crew v-neck and polo styles shop instant new favorites like healthier sapphire steel seafarer dark orchid and more and if it's work bottoms you need because you're not just on virtual calls all day uh they got you covered with moisture wicking twill chino pants that don't wrinkle and even stretchy denim in all the most popular inseams i just like flaked when i read that are they say that are they wicking ball sweat off god bless them so if you're ready to upgrade um your closet shop with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash burr and save up to 25 percent off your first order that's trueclassic.com slash burr please support our show and tell them we sent you no matter how you move make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with true classic all right, I'm going to take a break here because I'm not going to have time to do my work. I got to do my work out here and then go do some spots. So I'm going to fucking. Oh, well, let's just I'm going to edit this. It's going to be right back. Why, why am I telling you all this shit? Hang on a second. All right. Just like that, a day's gone by and old freckles back. Oh, the, the wonders of editing. Um, all right. Let's do uh, what the hell am I doing here? Let's do some of the reads here. Not the reads, the write ins. People writing in. They write in, I read it, and then I answer it. All right. Comedy Store Show. Hey, Bill, I was at the store Saturday when you performed. I just want to say how much it meant to me to see you. You made my entire trip to L.A. Well, look, Jesus Christ. You didn't go to the La Brea Tar Pits? How about the Peterson Museum? Um, Disneyland? The happiest place in the world. That's so fucking creepy. The happiest place in the world. Um, I was there with my girl. She got a little mouthy. And you put her in her place in a hilarious fashion. I don't even remember that. Where did you two meet in line getting your glass glasses prescriptions filled? I, I be honest with you, I don't even remember saying that. Oh, wait a minute. I remember her. She was dead center. She didn't get mouthy. She was fun. Your girlfriend's cool. I wasn't upset with her. I was just fucking around. She just yelled something out. Anyway, uh, you kill me, man. Love you, brother. And the new stuff you did that night was great. Oh, thank you. Well, I hope so. I'm gearing up here. Can you guys tell? Can you can you can you hear the gears grinding as I'm I'm gearing up? Um, you know the broads, huh? The broads, the ladies, uh, clam nation. <laughs> Wasn't that a new metal album, Clam Nation? Um, it's an all-girl female band. It's a girl band. Remember that? She's a girl. G-R-R-R-R-L. Remember that? Remember that stupid era when they used to describe some women like that? She's a girl. They still were calling her a girl. They weren't calling her a woman. And then they were also saying, like, look, she can be as, like, she can have misdirected anger, too, just like a man. We're just as fucking dumb as you are, feminism. Um... Anyway, uh, I went on the, the, the uh, Instagram. I had to look because I love whenever Mark Marquez is involved in some sort of, you know, knocking somebody out of the race or whatever. There's just 
all like the, 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 the race fanboys. It's like the real housewives where the, the ladies go out and they fucking pick one wife. I'm on, I'm on team Jessica. Oh my God. How can you like Jessica? She's such a lion whore. Well, it's better than Tabitha. At least your tits are real, whatever the fuck they do. It's stupid, right? I do the same thing with motorcycle racing. I just like watching everybody going, you know, Mark Marquez had the line. That was Pecco's fault. What are you talking about? He obviously overshot the turn, and Pecco was making it, and Mark didn't even turn around and look. <laughs> so dumb. And then there'll be like fucking 900 comments, and I read every single one of them. And I'm just sitting there going, like, what am I doing? What am I doing? It's a beautiful day. Why don't I fucking go outside instead of reading fucking, you know, comments about people about a robot, a uh, fucking robot, a motorcycle race. I was joking with somebody last night going, you know, in the future with this fucking AI shit that nobody wants. Nobody wants just the psychos that run the world. Um there's going to be, a, like, in the future, when you say you're dating somebody, they'll be like, human or robot? You know, that'll be this weird thing. There'll be definitely, like, this real, like, biblical shit going on where they'll have to add a new chapter to the Bible that condemns it, you know? And then all these religious people try as they might to live by the ways of the Bible. They will still be human. And they will like somehow, you know, they'll give in to temptation and then they'll have to go to confession. This is all Catholic shit. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been one week since my last confession. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, I had relations with a robot. <laughs> And then the priest is going to have to figure out how many Hail Marys and our Father, she have to say, you know? Well, what kind of sex did you have? Were, were you respectful? What was going on? Uh, Father, I'd rather not get involved in that. Um, and then it's going to keep progressing. And then you're going to have like some women out there. You know, women, women do shit. They just get all up in their fucking egos. Not all women, just those fucking idiots that are always talking, right? And uh, they'll be like, what? Yeah. You know? I, hey, hey, guys, guys, I tried a human man, okay? I tried. It didn't work out. They're childish, they're immature, and they just can't fulfill my needs, all right? What I like about the Chris 1000 is Chris, I come home Dinner is made, and he asks me how I'm feeling, okay? And I can tell you, that is a hell of a lot more than any human Chris ever did for me. Guys, guys, let's, I think it's time we normalize fucking a robot. Like, that's literally, that's what's, how insane does that sound? And that is on the horizon. And you think about the shit that we're actually focusing on, getting upset about, you know? Did you hear what this person said? Did you hear what that person said? No, no. Do you hear what the fucking nerds are doing? Nerds. Nerds. All right? I'm tired of this fuck. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm tired of this, that, that tech bro. Oh, he's one of those tech bros. No, no, no. He's a fucking nerd. Don't try to make it frat adjacent. Those fucking frat boy idiots, they, they don't know how to fucking rewire the world. That's nerd shit. Weird science. They're the ones. They're the ones that are going to go out and fuck up the world. And it's up to you hot broads to go out and just every once in a while, just fucking nerd. Okay, so maybe he'll think about what he's doing. This is like Oppenheimer with pussy. It's <laughs> stupid. I don't know what we've done. I think we just did it. Yeah, you did just do it. Um, and you gave it to dummies. Um, anyway, I still love the movie. Oh my God. I love that fucking movie. Oppenheimer. Oh, you got the bomb. I got the bomb. 
what we're going to do, we're going to drop two. Well, why don't you drop one? Well, we're going to drop two. Not one, no, two. Right, bang on. Uh, Leprechaun Wish, sitcom character. Hey, Billy Bouncy Bullocks. I like that. Junk swaying from the left and the right. I must be wearing sweatpants with no underwears. Uh, on the 18th March Monday morning podcast, a listener wrote in to ask what sitcom character would you wish to be if a leprechaun could grant you a wish? You know, I got to be honest with you. When I read this title, Leprechaun Wish Sitcom Character, I thought you were going to say that I should play a lep- leprechaun in a sitcom. Um, that, that should be like a challenge. Can Bill Burr play a leprechaun in a sitcom five seasons and still have a career afterward? <laughs> and I never break character. I just like defend what I'm doing the, all five seasons. No, what? It definitely intrigued me. You know, I, I feel like um, the whole leprechaun realm has never been dived into beyond the pot of gold and lucky charms. What intrigued me about this project was that Terry, the character I'm playing, actually had like feelings. And um, I think it's time to normalize. That's what you do when you get talked into a corner. As a liberal in Hollywood, you say normalize. That's what you do when you get caught for doing something stupid. Don't shame me for playing a leprechaun on a sitcom. I think it's time we normalize having a beard with no mustache. All right, um, let me plow ahead here. Uh, there is one, okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, leprechaun grant you wish. Okay, there is only one correct answer to this question. Jesus, I've been in that relationship before. Um, And it is Captain, later promoted to Major, Tony Nelson from I Dream a Genie. (laughs) I would do that if it was the fucking Leaving Las Vegas version or the Rated R version, the Boogie Nights version. Tony Nelson is an astronaut that has a smoking hot lady willing to grant him any wish he wants, which could include the smoking hot genie that never ages. Did I mention he also ha- he is also an astronaut? Pretty badass. Um, that was the most frustrating series I ever watched in my life. I can't imagine doing that now with some woman just walking around talking to the man. Oh, master. <laughs> you guys realize one of the hardest jobs in show business is the people that write shows. They just sit in the fucking room, you know, for like 12, 14 hours every day, cranking the shit out. And then they just send the script into suits and they're like, eh, I don't like this part. Why don't you pull this out? And then the worst part is if you're working, you're writing on a show and the showrunner is in like a loveless marriage and he doesn't want to go home and he just is avoiding He's just avoiding the divorce talk. So every time you think you've gone through the script enough time, he's just going to keep going. One of my favorite jokes of all time was that on that Billy Crystal show, as far as inside jokes. um, Oh, my God. What the fuck was the name of that show? And the other actor, Josh, who was in... um, Oh, God. I can't remember the fucking names or anything. Not... Hamlet. What the fuck was the name of the uh, Mormon? The fuck is it name? The name of the fucking thing. I just read it yesterday. Mormon. uh, The Book of Mormon. He was in the original cast, the Book of Mormon. Anyways, they did this fucking they were doing this amazing goddamn fucking show. And it still pisses me off that it got canceled. It was about this older, you know, legendary comic getting paired up with this younger up and coming comedian. And it was all these inside jokes on show business. Such a great, well-written show. One of my favorite shows, because I was writing on F is for Family. And thank God, the great Mike Price loves his wife. So it was a fucking awesome show to write on. But I learned all of these stories from the other writers talking about the shit that they had worked on. And they had a joke on that, um, on the Billy Crystal show, 
where they were talking about the writers and they were trying to get to get them to work more. They were somehow trying to fuck them out of money or something like that. And uh, they were messing with their lunch hour, taking the lunch hour, turn it into like a half hour or something like that. And one of the characters in the show goes, we can't do that. Lunch is all those people have. <laughs> And I wrote on a great show, a fun show. F is for Family was so much fun to write on. And even that was a fucking grind. I don't even know what the hell that has to do with anything I was talking about. Um, where is it? Oh, so anyway. Oh, I know what I was talking about. So I was talking to them, like some of the guys that wrote on like The Simpsons and how The Simpsons, uh, like... Um, Homer and, and Marge have like this great sex life. I go, you writers always do that shit, right? Because you're always away and you're stuck in the rooms and they just laugh going, yeah, yeah. It's like you're just writing this whole fucking fantasy. So you go back to the 60s and it's just this beautiful chick calling you master and she wants to fuck the shit out of you, you know, which of course in real life you would, you know, but it's on TV. So he has to do the right thing. It was so fucking annoying. She'd be throwing herself at him and he'd be going, all right, all right, all right. Jeez, get him. You know, genie, 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 get off me. <laughs> and then meanwhile, he had no girlfriend and he always hung out with this other dude. You know, you know, gay people always let straight people know that they were actually watching a gay show like 20 years later. Everything from like Bert and Ernie to like, uh, what was another one? Batman and Robin. Like they were gay. I thought it was I thought it was his ward. I had no idea what a ward was. And then gay guys are going like, no, no, that was totally a uh, fucking gay relationship. <laughs> You're like, oh, shit. How did I not know they were wearing the costumes, walking around in tights like gay people do that. Um, anyway. Uh, Major Nelson. Uh, OK, let's let's clarify one thing about the astronaut playing an astronaut would be cool. But I, I have to tell you this, uh, this whole idea that you get your pilot's license and then you have the balls to go to space is I don't know if that works with other people, but not with me. I am fucking terrified of outer space. Outer space to me is as terrifying. The ocean in outer space. Um, every time I go by the beach and I just watch people in the water. I get, you know, frolicking around up to your waist or whatever, right? Um, and that's the only thing you can do in water if you're not swimming. You're either swimming or frolicking. That's it. Or water polo. Um, those people that get out where their feet aren't touching the bottom anymore, it's just like I, I, you just... <laughs> it's like, do you remember one of the original YouTube videos when that baby was playing with the cobra and you didn't realize they had taken the fangs out? and sewed its mouth shut. And they, I guess they were trying to teach the kid not to be afraid of snakes. Um, I mean, could, couldn't they get a different snake? Like something like not poisonous? I guess it would still bite it. I don't know. That's, that's like what I, you know, when you're just sitting there like looking away going, Jesus, 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 right? And uh, that's how I feel when I watch people just swimming in the ocean, knowing, knowing, that we fished out the ocean and that there's a bunch of predators in there and they need to eat. I'm going to tell you the day shit's going to get fucked up is when a killer whale just finally just gives in and eats a person. Cause for whatever reason, they don't eat us. And what I love is when you Google, why don't killer whales eat human beings? There's people out there that actually have the balls to answer that question without saying that they're just guessing. They're acting like they can, com they can, com can communicate with, with uh, whales. Like I can't even fucking talk talking about communication. It's like you have no fucking idea why they don't. Um, I can tell you right now, if they knew what was happening to their friends in SeaWorld, ah, oh, jeez, Billy Greenpeace over here. Um... Anyways, this person says, saw you at Fenway as a baseball junkie. That was a dream come true. Love the podcast, the specials, and all the projects you put together. Best to Nia, the kids, but you, Mr. Burr, can go fuck yourself. Oh, that was written. That was written perfectly. Um, all right. Where are we now? All right. Billy Biker. 
Hey, oh, Billy Baja 1000. I heard you on Neil Brennan Blocks podcast, and you mentioned you have a motorcycle now. I haven't been listening to the MMP as much. Life is hectic currently. So maybe I missed it, but I'm curious as to what kind of bike you got. I remember you took the class, wanted to get a bike, but ultimately did not because of safety. You're not wrong in that regard. No, I ended up getting a, a Triumph Bonneville, and I had it for about a month and a half, and I was just like, you know, it was, it was, it was, and I used to ride with Dean Del Rey, so there was two of us, so I figured you got a better chance of people seeing us, and even then, there was still a couple of close calls, and I was just thinking like, I like my legs. I like my legs attached to my body. I like being alive. Um, anyway, um, so I sold it. I meant to write a while back and recommend a Honda Monkey to you, a 125cc low seat height classic styling, as I think you'd like both the look and the fun factor. Happy riding, even if you just contain to your local airport. P.S. I work near Long Beach, I'm assuming, airport, and anytime I see a helicopter, I think, I wonder if that's all freckles. Have a good one, cue ball, and go fuck yourself. All love. Fellow moto enthusiast. No, I got a uh, uh, Royal Enfield uh, 300 or 350. I don't even know what it is. It's, uh, you know, it's perfect for me. You know, I, I, I don't know how many hours I have riding a motorcycle. I would be surprised if I had more than 20. I mean, I am ridiculously new at doing it, and it's just fun. I just cruise around the airport. I do a couple of laps. Laps. I have a stupid ear-to-ear -ear grin on my face and I'm just excited I know how to do this I'm just excited I know how to do it and it's fun and now I've totally gotten into like mastering it um as far as knowing when to downshift um the blinkers and all of that shit uh it is kind of great it is kind of great experience I mean I always tell myself at some point you know, when I do one of these gigs, like Springfield, when I'm out there, it's sort of more out in a rural area, um, that I might go to a Harley place and just rent a bike and just sort of ride around a little bit, but I don't know. Then I talk to these other guys, they're like, well, then when you get out there, you got to worry about deer and moose running out in front of you. It's like, you know what? It's just, that's stupid. It's a stupid fucking thing to do but it's 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 awesome i literally watched this like 20 minute video of this guy riding um it's like 10 other people on like harley road kings they did all of route 66 and they turned and they did it right they turned it into like a two week 10 day two week thing instead of trying to just get through it in like three days and they literally stopped everywhere and um it was kind of like one of those things, like, like, like they really did that trip right, um, that video that I watched. And I can't imagine the level of planning that was involved because um, it seemed like they, they did like a thousand things. And you're checking out and checking in every day. It's like 14 hotels, 10 hotels or something. Um, but anyway... Uh, there's a few places there's somebody wrote in about there's a track or something like that. And there's another person that, you know, there's a couple of tracks where you can just get all geared up and go fucking ride around. But then I worry a track, there's going to be some fucking asshole riding like his, you know, come flying up behind me and take me out. Um, that's why, you know, I like the airport. Do, 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 do. It's old third gear Billy. <laughs> all right. Nose job. Hey, Billy Big Tits Bird, nice fan of your comedy and a longtime listener to the podcast. Never had a reason to write in, but have a bit of a situation I'd like to hear your take on. My wife's uncle back in Thailand got sick, like terminal cancer sick. Uh, so my wife went to go see him. The kids and me stayed behind because of school and work. Anyway... Anyhow, sorry, my wife video chats a week into the trip and she's got bandages all over her nose. She went and got a fucking nose job while she was out there and didn't communicate with me at all about it. This is like such a classic man of today. Now, I get that it's her body. You have to say that. It's, so that's like fucking 
if you get a bad nose job, it literally changes how you look. Anyway, I also wouldn't go out and get, okay, I, and I get that it's her body. I also, but I also wouldn't go out and get a face tattoo without having a conversation with her about it first. What's worse is it looks terrible. She looked great before, and now every time I look at her, I am angry. I don't know how to get past it. She's coming home today, and I don't know how I'm going to get through the anger I have. Anyway, would love to hear your take and the lovely Nia if she's around. P.S. That John Lovett's podcast was hilarious. Loving hearing you guys shit on each other. I was dying on the, on the way to work. Thanks for the laughs and go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, I have to be honest with you. That's like, you're 100% in the right to feel angry about that. I mean, that's something you definitely have to have a conversation with the other person about. Um, like, I don't even, like... Yeah, you're saying it like looks bad, and like why? Why did she go to Thailand to get it done? Was is that the place? Like I know every like in my business, whatever everybody keeps going to Turkey to get like hair plugs and shit. <laughs> so, and it must be the place to go. Um, maybe Thailand is they're doing the best nose jobs. I don't know, but um, to do something like that without saying anything I mean that's like and then that's also like well what else are you fucking doing out there I mean I 100% understand your anger I mean why would she do that without talking to you first and you know what sucks about being a guy is you have to manage that anger and you have to bring it down and then you have to sit into where they could just come in and be like, oh, my God, what the fuck did you do? And uh, they could just they could just ah, and fucking emote. But the reason why they're allowed to do that is because, generally speaking, they can't beat the shit out of you. So as a man, you have to watch your anger around the woman because it's, it's just a different thing, I guess. I don't know. Or it's probably the usual thing where they can do whatever the fuck they want. And, you, you know, you have to, like, exist by a different set of rules. Um, I don't know what to tell you, dude. I think it's. I think it's beyond fucked up. That is such a huge fucking decision. And then on top of that, she got one that doesn't look good. According to you, it doesn't look good. And it, I, I, I don't, I mean, that's fucked up. It's like I married you and you just changed you. Now I feel like, uh, oh my God, the robot version of you showed up where it's sort of you, but not quite you. Um... I got to be honest with you. I, I, I have to tap out on this one. I don't know what I would do. I don't, I would be, once I got through the anger, I would be really sad that I'm not married to the person I used to be married to, the person that I looked at, the face that I fell in love with that she just went out and fucking altered. That, that's really fucked up, dude. That's really fucked up. So I'll just do this. I'm supporting you. You have every right to be angry. Um... And then, like, what are you supposed to do? What are you going to tell her it looks horrible? You can't do that. They could. They could say, you look stupid. <laughs> and then a week later, just be like, I'm sorry I said that. I was just angry. You have to understand that what you did upset me. It's always, you know, it always comes back around them. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would get professional help on that one. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, she would let you have it. And now all I do when you're at work is I go back and look at old pictures of you being like, why did he do it? That's what they would do. If you do that to her, then you'll never hear the end of it. I came home with my new nose and I needed to be supported. And you made me feel ugly. That's what that's what she would do. Like there's, you know what it is with them? There's no fucking winning. There's no fucking. There's just no fucking winning. And then the best part is like the the basically 
the I don't know what you, the slug line that's going on out there is that there if there's a victim in the relationship it's them. <laughs> um, wow, buddy, I I feel for you and I and I think you have every right in the world to be angry, sad, depressed. Jesus fucking Christ. What a fucking thing to do without saying... I want to hear from the ladies. What do, you, what do you think out there? You know what I mean? I mean, at least if you got, like, fake titties, they can... They don't even do the bag anymore, do that? I'm saying they can reverse it. You can't reverse a fucking nose job. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's fucked up. I, I don't want to tell you, dude. That is just fucked up, and you're 100% right to feel fucked up about it. So you have to just not get mad and just be like, yeah, I can't... I don't even know what... You don't look like the same person I married. And then she's going to fucking storm out of the room and cry. And then you're going to have to apologize to her because in, in, it's just. I'm sorry. I thought you'd like it. I'm sorry. You think I'm ugly. All right, it's just there's no fucking way. I don't I don't know of a way. Hey, ladies, we need how, how can he approach this subject and actually be heard? And what the fuck is he supposed to do that now he went from being married to her to being married to her cousin or her not as good looking sister? <laughs> There's always the hot one. All right. Uh, the last Messiah. But I, I would definitely, you know, dude, if you actually feel like beyond a certain level of anger, just go out and get some help to go to a therapist, talk about it or whatever. I, I don't know. Like that is like, I'm joking around about it. Cause that's why I do the podcast. I am not trained in any sort of psych psychology shit. And I think what that thing is like, those are the ones that I read and I get like nervous. Cause that is beyond the pay grade of a stand up comedian. Um, wow. Sorry. You're going through that brother. All right. The last Messiah, uh, dear Billy bath salts. What are bath salts? All I remember about bath salts is it turns you into a zombie and you start eating somebody's face, right? Remember that? It was like a thing for a minute. Kids were going around fucking eating those things and doing all kinds of crazy shit, right? Is that right? Or is that something different? Is it a different drug and it's just nicknamed bath salts? I don't know. Hey, 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 hey. I don't want to know. How about that? All right. Have you ever read the essay, Den Siste Messiah, The Last Messiah? Dude. How fucking long have you been listening to this podcast? Of course I haven't. By the Norwegian philosopher and mountain climbing enthusiast, Peter Weissel Zapfer. Of course I didn't. I've generously included a link to the translated version for your perusal. All right, I like this person. This person is very subtly saying that they know that I'm a fucking moron. Uh, Zampf, Z-A-P-F-F-E. An all-around swell dude has been described as one of the bleakest thinkers of all time and place. Uh, naturally, he's on to something. I've heard you rant and rave about the corporations and their insatiable greed and unchecked malice. The lunacy of ordinary people distracted by twinkling stars and erectile dysfunction medication. Hymns. Oh, he listens to the podcast. I think our resident philosopher, Smiley Zamp, can elucidate dude this fucking guy these guys are smarty elucidate uh do you know for the longest time i thought lucid meant you were fucking loopy i didn't know it meant you were thinking clearly some of the horrors of our existence and perchance p-e-r-c-h-a-n-c-e perchance explain some of our species more malicious and evil behavior all right, I would read this, although it seems like I have to look up every other word if you're some sort of barometer. Ah, look at that. I threw a barometer, huh? Look at what you're doing. You're making me smarter. Uh, in The Last Messiah, he argues that our existence, angst, despair, and depression is due to our overly involved intellect. We have an overabundance of consciousness. We think too much for our own good. We are a biological paradox, an abomination, an absurdity, an exaggeration of disastrous nature. Wow. I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty eloquently put. Uh, doesn't Eloquently? Look what you're doing to me. Doesn't that sound like these cunts 
who bomb Palestine into oblivion and the fuckers who are hell bent on convincing us that Trump and Biden aren't two heads of the same serpent. Borrowing from psychoanalysis, Zamf argues that we, as overthinking viruses, have four methods of limiting the contents of our consciousness. Parentheses are said differently, hiding the awfulness of existence from ourselves. We can isolate, I've been doing that lately, avoid thinking altogether, thinking too much about death, suffering, and the presidential election is too much. Uh, it's better to watch F is for family and eat Cheetos. <laughs> oh boy, this is getting a little too close to home here. Uh, we can anchor, fixate on the values or I, an ideal. Sam's exquisite example are church, God, state, morality, fate, the laws of life, and the future. We can distract, prevent the mind from ever examining itself. How about some external stimulation, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and the Super Bowl? Anything to not be aware. Dude, this is, this is fucking, this is getting, this is disturbing. I agree with all of this. We can sublimate. Turning the pain of living into something valuable. Yeah, life is shit, but the shit has some meaning to it because of X, Y, Z. Um, I have to be honest with you, if I just stop right here, uh, this right here, all of this, I agree with, like, what you do with your brain and all, everything that he's saying here. And the only thing that has saved me has been finding love and then having children. Having a dog, riding a motorcycle around an airport, <laughs> with that dopamine grin on my face, um, and also uh, helping other people. Just trying to like, all right, I can't stop all of this big shit, but I can go into this store, be nice to this person. I can see this person needing money. You know, of course, you try to judge if they're on drugs or alcohol. Give them a little bit of money. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Wow. There's some reason, like, the way this is explained, though, isn't depressing. It's actually, like, enlightening. Enlightening! Where are these words coming from? I'm interested to hear you... Uh, in my world, that's a big word. All right, fuck off. I'm interested to hear your take on this. I'm also interested to learn if you think his suggestion, anti-nationalism, is good or bad, and why. I mean, not being for your country? Well, you... There's a trust factor. Everyone would have to do it. I mean, that's what I would love. You just sort of let go of all of these stupid leaders with their dumb flags behind them. Oh, my God. That reminded me of that guy way back in the day, Damon Zex. Damon motherfucking Zex. When he used to be on um, public access here in New York. I used to watch that with Bobby Kelly. It was fucking awesome. Uh, your answer will, of course, be graded. And if you get an F, you'll have to repeat summer school, wear the dunce hat, and listen to the greatest hits of New Kids on the Block. I like New Kids. Oh, 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 on repeat for 128 hours while we sleep deprive you and, you and scream obscenities at you. Clockwork Orange there. So for any and all misspellings, weird grammar, and other dumb shit, I'm a stupid foreigner whose native language sounds like a series of grunts and pig squeals. Dude, fuck off if you can do this is your second language. You have more command of this language than I do. I'm regularly distracting myself from life's horrors with your podcasts and stand-up shows. And I remember catching you live when you played Oslo Spectrum. Great set. If you ever come back to Norway, I'll be sure to get some tickets. Kindest regards. And a merry, how do you fucking do, chairman of the Positivity Council. Well, I'm going to fucking read the, whatever the hell you told me to read. All right, here's a link right here. Uh, oh, Christ, turn off airplane mode. All right, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to turn off airplane mode so I can tell you guys what the name of this thing is because that was fascinating to me to at least understand, you know, why we're doing the things that we do here. All right, philosophy now. Philosophy now. <laughs> That's such a funny name. Philosophy sounds like you're just sort of chilling out wearing a fucking toga and you just be chill, right? Philosophy, no. Uh, the Last Messiah. Um, 
by Peter. W okay, I'll spell it out for you if you're interested in this. Oh, it was published in 1933. Peter Wessel, W-E-S-S-E-L, Zapf, Z-A-P-F-F-E. Peter Wessel, W-E-S-S-E-L, Z-A-P-F-F-E, Zapf. Originally published January 9th, 1933. Translated from Norwegian, um, The Last Messiah. And philosophynow.org, or you can buy it. I don't know where. Um, I'm going to fucking read this. Thank you so much. That's amazing. All right. That's the podcast, everybody. Go fuck yourselves, and I'll check in on you on Thursday. <laughs>